So, um, hello everybody. Um, it's fantastic to be here and um, it's really a pleasure to be able to tell my story about my um, very dramatic shift from um, mainstream medicine into being a multi-dimensional physician. I no longer practice normal medicine. Um, it just wouldn't work for me. So I really left that all behind and um, now work um, with energy to activate people's DNA and to remove what I see as the blocks to a person transitioning into higher frequencies. What I've found is that people are really um, blocked from many, many technologies. And I'm using the word technology to mean um, past life karmic program, bringing forth an energy signature that um, really is sabotaging. Or family lineage program. We've all inherited family lineage energy signatures and their vows and contracts and spells and curses. And great, you know, we've landed with that. We've also got, um, just growing up in our culture and our society, the things that are being done to us to make us blinkered, unaware and unawake. And those things need to be released from us so that we can open up to who we really are. We're also being sabotaged, I believe, with genetically modified food, with the um, vaccine program, with... Um, the chemtrails, the mercury that were put in people's teeth, you know, the fluoride in the water. It's becoming pretty evident that there's been a lot done to us, not only in our past lives, but in this lifetime. And um, there's electromagnetic frequencies also, you know, coming in to affect us. And um, so my job is to peel all that off people. And so I'm using energy techniques and the aim is to restore people to what I see as our natural state. We are meant to be full of peace, love, joy and just a background of happiness, not relying on a certain activity to, wow, I'm, um, you know, drudgery for the week and wow, I've got something exciting happening on the weekend. That sort of fuels me. But just to feel this as our background state. And I have that a lot of the time where I just know this is who we are. We're meant to be at peace, feeling love and joy. And um, so my story, how did I get from that mainstream medical field to where I am today? So my story um, really of transition started in June 2008. I was working as a GP, married to a surgeon. I had four children, two, four, six and eight. I lived a picture perfect 3D existence. I had a mansion, a swimming pool, a tennis court, a cleaner, a gardener and a pretty amazing 3D existence. And we went for a family walk, an extended family, my brothers and sisters and the kids' cousins and my parents, and we went for a local family walk on a beach called Williams Beach. And when we came back from that beach in the middle of winter, car park that was completely empty, out of the blue comes a car, out of control, driven by an underage driver, not licensed, out of control, comes straight up onto the footpath and crushes my four-year-old son in front of the whole family. <clears throat> so there's the car squashed onto my son. The kid could not even reverse the car off him. Eventually, my brother gets into the car, backs it off, and my son just collapses. My son, William, on William's Beach out of the blue, ridiculous accident. And something started to happen to me in that moment. It was absolutely incredible. I was full of absolute hysteria, grief, like you wouldn't believe, traumatized, beyond what a human can really probably bear, but you do. But something else was happening to me at that time. I got messages 
there is a bigger picture here. Something is going on. This isn't what it appears. And it was really incredible because it was such a strong sensation that I started to immediately remember my son's remarks to me of, Mum, I love you more than you. He used to say it to me all the time out of a four-year-old's mouth. I didn't understand it. But it, shortly after this tragedy, it made sense. I love you, who you really are, the capital U, the big U, the multi-dimensional me, that different perspective of who we really are. Start transitioning into that, see the world from that perspective. And that was actually what got me through my grief. I was told to go and see counsellors, psychologists and doctors. Their response to grief was, would you like an antidepressant? Would you like some sleeping tablets? Now, I knew I wasn't depressed. I was in deep grief and that needs a lot of transitioning. You need to really work through so much. And I also... Um, was finding that the psychologist, because they were having such a 3D perspective, couldn't understand where I was coming from because I was starting to get signs. I was starting to hear messages. I was seeing balls of light come out of the area where he was killed that actually would immerse me and take me into a space of something completely different where the world seemed okay. And then Half an hour later, I'd go, my God, how could it possibly be okay? My son has just died. But I kept getting things like that happen. And then I got a message, you must be quiet, you must be still, you must start to meditate. And so I promptly got a book that was one of those synchronicities when you're walking past a shop and I saw <coughs> Eckhart Tolle's The New Earth and I devoured that cover to cover a number of times and just understood it all. And gradually transitioned myself into this new way of being, this new understanding of greater things happening on the planet. And so many downloads came and started opening me up to what we now know is a shift in consciousness and a transition from a human, very dense perspective to the perspective of who we really are. I ended up going to a local ashram and doing a lot of their meditation and their weekly programs and they invited me to go to India in 2014. <coughs> I'd started to go back to a little bit of work after probably about three or four years after William's death and I'd started to, I'd pulled myself away from mainstream medical um, practice and realised I couldn't do that because I was waking up to what was going on. And I ended up doing what I called spiritual counselling and guiding people to have that higher perspective. But it was after the ashram had invited me to go back to India to a temple in a little town called Ganeshpuri, just an hour and a half east of um, Mumbai. I um, completely changed the way I practice from going to that village. So I arrive in that village in November of 2014. I get off the bus in the village and I'm in a completely different dimension. I'm vibrating. I'm feeling absolutely incredible. Nothing felt the same. I was living in this really amazing peace. And on one occasion in the temple, I get zapped on the head like a poof through my whole body. And I never felt the same again. It was incredible. I realised that the being that was buried in that temple, Bhagwan Nichananda, was a galactic being. He was a multidimensional being who had incarnated into a human body, died in the late uh, in the 1960s, and was still emanating frequencies from that temple into the village, and that's what I was picking up. I now understand he's got a connection to my galactic star being family and I came home from that Indian trip telling my family 
wow, guess what? We're galactic. <laughs> There's incredible energies on the planet. We're going through a transition. This is really incredible. I'm going to be a healer. Um, there's all these really bad things happening that the government's aware of. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was not met with a lot of encouragement. <laughs> and that was part of the transition in a big way. I was thrown out of my family home. I was told that I was going mad and that I really um, wasn't functioning you know, appropriately. The medical community in my local area decided that you know, she'd really lost the plot, nervous breakdown. But I was going through this incredible transition. It was like I was looking at the world through a completely different lens. Everybody that didn't understand me was like, well, you know, you're just not here. But in fact, to them, obviously, I wasn't quite there. And now I look back, I wasn't grounded. I was really flying high. I was in cosmic consciousness, downloading and rewiring dramatically. Things were dropping off me. Programs, understandings, you know, that energy signature of family, the energy signature of the medical training, you know, boom, things were just, and downloads coming in about what was going on on this planet. So my husband at the time threw me out of the home. I lived in the Quest Hotel on the Payne Highway, Frankston, for a month. It was like my Himalayan cave. I took it to be my retreat and I actually just embraced it. And I did a lot of meditating and a lot of going deep and getting more and more information. Unfortunately, my, my um, ex-husband never recovered from seeing his wife go through that and he was clearly plummeted into deep fear and so couldn't couldn't get himself out of that and he was supported by a whole community that said you're right she's really odd and um, anyway I managed to uh, continue with my work that I was doing and what I noticed is that my whole approach was changing and what was happening is that I was able to embody frequencies now and actually give that frequency into a person and activate their higher dimensional self, bring that online, bring that into the person and actually start peeling off their programming. So this was quite fascinating and what was unbelievable is that people were starting to see me shapeshift. So this was all pretty out there as well, that I'd be sitting in the chair, bringing in these frequencies, absolutely supported by this great being that was buried in the temple, but all his family members from the galaxy. The patient's gal uh, galactic family was also coming in and supporting the whole process. We had the higher dimensions on tap, and you know this was just transforming people. Um, the, the the transformations or the um, shape shifting that people were seeing was quite incredible. They didn't even need to be that awake, and so people would just come in and, and notice it, and and still do. So. Um, I'd take on the form of that great being and people would say, my God, you've turned into the, an Indian man. You're bald, you're fat, you're sitting there, you haven't got many clothes on. Um, <laughs> or they'd see me as an Egyptian with long, dark hair or they'd see me as a Native American or I would take on the form of a realised female being from India. And people would see this and it would blow them away because, again, a lot of them weren't that awake. And it's interesting, it doesn't seem to depend. It's a re receptivity and this is where my work is very interesting in that it's all about your readiness to accept these frequencies, having that open mind and actually transitioning with it. So, um, and, you know, to the point now where... Um, I was sitting at my dinner table the other day with my kids that I must tell you, well, I got my children. I ended up now sharing them with my ex-husband. So I now look after four. I went on to have another girl um, in that early stage after I'd lost William. So I still have, uh, well, I now have four 
children and um, the two little ones who are seven, uh, eight and 11 actually accept me for who I am and see me shape shift at various times. And the eight year old often says, can you become the blue alien? I'd really like to give her a hug. <laughs> because she's really loving. <laughs> and um, my older two, 15 and 17, are struggling a little bit because, you know, they're going through that teenage time where it's really, you're meant to be fitting in and they're really, um, you know, mum's a bit weird. But <laughs> they feel, they know and they can feel that it is about love, it is about respect, it is about kindness and it is about, you know, coming to a place of peace about who we are. And it was interesting, I was sitting at the dinner table with my son's girlfriend, 15, not awake, not aware, didn't know any of this, and she, everybody else had left the table and she said, tell me a bit about your work. I said, oh, well, it's pretty out there. I do this multidimensional, and as I said it, I shapeshifted. She said, oh my God, who have you become? So um, clearly you don't have to be particularly awake and I think the good news is that we do know this shift in consciousness is happening because here are these people coming forth to see me and this is taking place for them so we know that this is um you know there is a shift and we know from the previous talk what we were hearing about all of that but I can tell you I'm well one I'm evidence of it and two, I'm seeing it all over the globe with people that are stepping forward to have sessions with me. Um, the work that I'm doing, um, as I was trying to, uh, as I was saying before, is about releasing these um, things that I see that have been done to us to stop us from feeling our natural state. I talk about people having genetic manipulation, that, that we have got genetic material in us that is sabotaging, that we need to be released from. We're also having genetic insertions done to us through this chemtrailing and genetically modified food. That is doing genetic manipulation. They are setting us up to have receivers and receptors. They are giving us parasitic thought forms that are actually continuing the, the, um, uh, the, those feelings and thoughts of I'm failing, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. That feeling like there's always something else that I need to achieve that I haven't quite made it yet and that constant sort of low grade anxiety of, of not fitting in. These are being manipulated into us because our natural state does not have that. That that we are from the multi-dimensional realm coming into this human physicality doesn't have all those tearing, ruminating thoughts that are pulling us down. And they are leading us into illness. They are actually taking us away from the alignment with who we are and actually making us feel unworthy, making us feel not right and have that for long enough, it turns into depression, anxiety, have it for even longer, it turns into some sort of disease. You know, irritable bowel, um, obesity, diabetes, you know, cancers, it's all part of this whole concept of what is going on on our planet to prevent us from becoming free and connected to who we're supposed to be. From my medical world, I actually was starting to notice why is it that we have so much youth suicide? Why do we have so much depression? Why are there so many antidepressants being put out? You know, why are we having an increase in, in diabetes? Why, you know, these cancers, what's going on? And it was really not that hard to actually understand from those perspectives that I was given that the medical field was really about putting band-aids on these things and actually fueling the pharmaceutical companies and it didn't really seem like it was a way of promoting well-being and healing. I'm not anti-doctor, having said all of that. There are doctors with great hearts that are doing their best for society, but they don't understand the world that we actually understand. There are also modalities that people can use that are helpful from mainstream medicine. And, you know, we, we, do, it, we, we don't need to turn our back on absolutely everything. There are times that we do need to, um, you know, use main, some, some of the things. But 
I was seeing the trend and what was happening to the masses and that was what was putting me off. Um, so basically my world changed completely and I must say I live with a lot more peace, a lot more happiness, joy. I'm unhappy about the destruction that went on for my family and I don't see that that is absolutely um, necessary but it was part of my transition to actually eject me out of that family unit to find who I really was. And it's interesting because the, the, the community still holds a belief that you know something really bizarre went on but because I'm so much more grounded now I'm able to present myself reasonably obviously looking after the children and working and there is a, a greater acceptance but what we do need to understand is that there is now a big divide between those of us that are getting these understandings these downloads and transitioning and some you know the family of origin our friends and our community and um, this is why we will be going through some shifts. Most of you won't experience it quite as dramatic as mine. But, you know, we are going to need to look at transforming, you know, our workplace and sometimes, you know, are we being supported energetically by the people we're surrounding ourselves with. So that is all part of the shift as well. And, um, you know, I guess we are all starting to become aware of it and that is what's... It's an uncomfortable part of it, but if you embrace it and actually follow that inner calling, those things peel off, you detach, you actually become the person you'll need to, you need to be to shift into this higher perspective. So, amazing time on the planet. We are shifting. The new children that are coming on the planet are absolutely incredible. They've already got activated DNA. They're coming with gifts and skills, bringing forth information from where they're doing work overnight, being downloaded or being taught off planet. People are being picked up by benevolent uh, beings, taken you know, to, for healings and having incredible experiences. So it is happening and there is going to be even more of this coming on because we're supported by photonic light packages coming in from the sun, activating dormant DNA. We've got the human's resonance rising in the planet. We've got the alignment of things setting up for this shift. So the good news is we are transitioning. Things are going to probably go through some chaotic times, but some great times are coming and I'm very positive about it. I also know we are being helped by these benevolent off-world beings and those frequencies and energies if we embrace them. With discernment, understand there is veiling that goes on and you need to be uh, you know, careful about you know, what you're aligning yourself with. But if it's expansive and if it's being, bringing you some upliftment and really from an energetic standpoint feels like it's okay for you, then generally speaking, it is. So, um, interesting, amazing times on this planet and, um, you know, I uh, really am excited about how I've managed to transition and be able to bring in these frequencies to do this work and by actually embodying the light that all of us can do, we activate our DNA. And what does that mean? It means we go from the manipulated DNA, releasing those fragments and actually activating the dormant DNA which holds our gifts and our abilities, our intuitions, our skills of connectedness to each other, our feelings of peace, love, joy, our self-healing, our well-being. So all of this is amazing. Now how do these frequencies come in and activate DNA? They can happen through somebody like me and other health practitioners that hold energies and bring that in. But we also can um, be activated by music, by artwork, by just being amongst other high vibrational people. Having conversations about this sort of thing, actually bringing in the truth and actually having dialogues activates that DNA. 
So there's many ways that we can do this and it's um, again very exciting that this is available to us to help us transition and overcome what I see are the things that have been done to stop us from, from ascending to our natural state. So what I thought I would actually do is um, do a um, meditative energy uh, experience for everybody. Um, we'll bring in some of these frequencies. Um, we're going to have, um, you know, different experiences will happen for different people. Um, I actually do need to, just before I get onto that, I'll just actually explain to you some of the things that have happened for people after they've had a, a, what I call a DNA activation, they'll often just say that they have more clarity, they don't have so many ruminating thoughts of, of self-doubt or self-concern. Uh, some people actually find that their relationship that was really difficult actually improves because they've dropped their triggering and their um, interactions that had been causing um, difficult communications because they've dropped their own um, program, kept their frequency up and not bought into the issue that was going on in the, in the relationship. Um, one person reported that after having um, this work done, not only did their relationship improve, but their fear of heights had disappeared. So clearly there are chunks of things that are connected on our DNA that when they get activated and, and, and released, you actually clear up other parts, you know, other problems. Um, I've had people that have had physical illnesses have improved. Now I'm not saying that I'm some sort of magician. Again, it's dependent on receptivity. But people have experienced, you know, their foot drop that has improved post um, a, a cerebrovascular accident. Um, people have found that they've lost weight, that they've actually changed their physical shape, that they're, you know, standing up taller, that some of their back alignment has you know, improved. Um, other people um, have just noticed that their anxiety has fallen away and they're just coping with their day-to-day -day life with a, a, a greater sense of peace and harmony, not buying into the density. And um, people also experience a dream, a release of some of their um, disturbing dreams and they're actually able to have a better night's sleep. Um, Many different things are happening for people. And so, it, again, it goes back to receptivity and, um, and, and what is required for you in this time. Um, some of the people have very dramatic experiences. I have them go through absolute physical releases. So I'll be doing a Skype with them and they'll actually start physically jerking and have emotions pouring out of them. Um, which is quite extraordinary and I find it interesting because I'm on the other side of the world, they're on the Skype screen, I'm bringing in these energies, they're having this full-on physical reaction and I'm going, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm holding a space for you as they're going through this dramatic experience. Um, but as we know, there is no time, there is no space in these higher dimensions like we understand down here and I really am holding them with an energy as they go through this peeling off of, of programming. Um, other people have their third eyes activated. They start to see the holographic nature of reality. They start to see through the layers that we live in here. They start seeing the, the sort of almost like the, the matrix lines and the drones coming over and the programmable things coming in. They see people as reptilians. They'll see amphibians. They, they're actually activated to be more aware of these higher vibrations from the multi-dimensional realm. So I think we'll um, get on and do a um, activation. So I'm just going to get everybody to um, sit with their feet comfortably on the ground. <coughs> We're going to close our eyes and we're going to connect our feet down through the base of our feet down to Mother Earth 
as I said before, she is increasing in frequency. She is also evolving as we are. And as we connect down to Mother Earth, we can connect to her galactic, uh, her crystalline grid lines, which hold an energy that is very supportive and will come up and actually support each and every one of you and help you release your fear about who you are, your self-concerns, your doubts. This energy also helps you change your perspective that you actually recognise that you are more than just this human form, that you are more than just this human mind-body costume, but in fact you are this multi-dimensional being. And as you connect down to this energy of Mother Earth, she brings these supportive energies up through your legs, opening up your hips, opening up the base of your spine, opening up all the pelvic organs and opening up the base chakra and releasing your fears, your doubts, anywhere you felt unworthy, not good enough, that perhaps you haven't done the right thing or where you have a concern about finances being supported. All of that starts to drop away And as we're connected deeply down to Mother Earth, we can now open up to our higher dimensional selves. We are multi-dimensional beings and that presence, that truth of us will come forward, opening up our crown and filling us up with frequencies that will start to activate every single cell in our body, activating our DNA, releasing any of the genetic manipulation, anything that's been inserted there, and lighting up our dormant DNA for our gifts and abilities and for us to feel peace and joy and harmony. As we open up to our higher dimensional selves, bringing in these frequencies, we will connect up with our galactic star being family. We are each connected to galactic families and these beings will also come forth with high frequencies to assist us in our evolution. And as we let go more and more and allow these energies to come in and around us, we start to activate more and more of our dormant DNA. I'm also going to call on the Palladians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Syrians, all of a benevolent nature. We will only work with high frequency benevolent beings. We are not interested and we will not allow or consent any negative beings, any negative interference, anything that is not in our highest good must leave now. We will only work with beings that are here for our greatest good and the greatest good for humanity. As we bring these frequencies in and around us, I'm going to release from people anything that's blocking their ability to feel frequencies. We have had things done to us that actually clamp us and stop us from connecting to our multi-dimensional self. Any clamping that's taken place on, a, on our crowns, on the back of our neck, back of our heads, down our shoulders and down our spines needs to be released now. Releasing any clamping any block to these high frequencies. I'm going to release also anything that's failing anybody, any entity, any being that's shadowing 
any being that's trying to puppeteer influence in a negative way must be released now. Any parasitic energies, any devices, any technologies that have been implanted need to be released now. As we bring in these frequencies into the mind, I'm going to release all the parasitic thought <coughs> forms, all the thought forms that take us into the past with guilt, shame, question what we did in the past, all that we need to detach from and release, and all thought forms that are taking us into the future with anxiety. What's going to happen? Am I going to be safe? Is my health going to be okay? All the thoughts that distract us out of the present moment need to be released. These thoughts have been activated to take us away from the truth of who we are and to take us out of the present moment. We're releasing those now. All parasitic, ruminating thought forms that take us out of the present moment are to be released and all technologies or receivers and receptors in the mind to be released. <laughs> going to bring the frequencies in now through the musculoskeletal system. We're going to do an energetic, like a chiropractic adjustment, releasing any stagnant energies, any programs, any technologies, so that we can embody more frequencies into our musculoskeletal system. We're going to start at the crown in the small bones of the head across our face, the small bones of our face, our jaw releasing down our neck between the vertebrae, the ligaments, across our shoulders into our shoulder joints, our elbows, wrists and hands releasing stagnant energies, devices and technologies. Bringing in more light between the vertebrae of our thoracic spine, our lumbar sacral spine, activating the muscles across our back and releasing from our backs family lineage programming, ancestral patterns where we carry the burden of our ancestors that was never ours and it's time to release. Releasing or sabotaging family lineage programs or vows, contracts, spells and curses are to be released out of our back, opening up so that we feel lighter, no longer living with the burden of the ancestors. Releasing all of that now as the light comes down through the vertebrae, between the bones, releasing and activating so that we embody more light. Bringing the energies down to the lumbar sacral area, to the hips, the pelvis, the knees, the ankles, the feet. Releasing all stagnant energies and embodying the light. going to bring this light in now straight through our chakra system, through our crown, our third eye, our throats, our hearts, solar plexus, navel and base, cleaning off all technologies, devices that are blocking those energy centres, all programs, 
sabotaging beliefs, behaviours, releasing and allowing the light to come through the chakra system so those energy centres are open and balanced and not only are we getting the frequencies coming in through our crown, through the chakra system, they now spread throughout our body, activating every cell in our body. We're going down onto the dormant DNA and we're going to activate that DNA in every cell. We're clearing off any receivers, receptors, any technologies, any genetic manipulation, any vows, contracts, spells and curses, past life karma, drama. Releasing that from every cell, bringing in the light and activating the dormant DNA for our gifts and abilities, our intuition, our multidimensional skills. Increasing the frequency in our body, the DNA evolves and we start to contact through this DNA like an antenna to the higher frequencies and embody more of our truth. We're also activating that background state of peace, love, joy, connectedness, well-being, self-healing and love. to protect all the work that we've done today. Nothing can be re-implanted, nothing can be um, undone. We're going to have some protection around us. We're going to allow these upgrades to take place over the following hours, throughout the day, overnight, and the following week. We're going to allow this light to continue to come in. Our benevolent galactic family to assist us for this ascension. So we can all open our eyes, take a deep breath. So, thank you all for your time today and um, I'm very excited about what's happening on this planet. And if I'm any example of um, the shift, it certainly is happening.